What's going on, everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash, and today is August 10th of 2017. So as you all know, if you watch my channel, I love getting feedback in the comments below and on my live streams about what coin or token I should cover next. And boy, have you all asked me about ICOs on this channel a ton. That being said, though, you probably know by now that I'm usually very skeptical about ICOs. I think that a lot of them, around 80 to 90 percent, are uh, not uh, coins or tokens that I touch with a 10-foot pole. And the biggest reasons being that a lot of them are overvalued at the start, a lot of them uh, overpromise on what they can truly deliver, and mainly a lot of them don't have the tech, the team, or the actual target market to really become the next Ethereum, the next Bitcoin, etc. That being said, there are a few coins, even in this kind of new shady market of ICOs that has just started to touch the cryptocurrency sphere, that really do give me a sense of optimism in their ambitions and their team and technology. And the coin I'm talking about today is no exception, folks. It is the Substratum Network. So what is Substratum? What is it aiming to achieve? Is the team and the tech there? And what are their ambitions for the long term? I'm, only, I'm not only going to be going over all of that, but I also want to let you all know that uh, I, I have so much confidence behind this coin that I wanted to make sure to go a little bit further in depth. And as the team reached out to me to cover this coin, I really wanted to ask them and see if we could do a live stream with one of the developers. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, which is a really cool opportunity for this channel. It's going to be one of our first interviews. And uh, we'll really get to get a deeper knowledge of this coin because I don't want to just promote ICOs. I want to make sure that you guys get all the information you need if you're interested in this concept. So that being said, let's jump right into Substratum and talk about what it's aiming to achieve and aiming to fix in the long term. So why am I optimistic on it, guys? Well, we can see here right on the homepage, they have a beautiful design here that really brings an attraction to looking into what they're aiming to achieve. And I can see that right off the bat, they're trying to be the foundation of the decentralized web. So. That sounds like a bold kind of a brash statement to make. What does it really mean? You know, and you can get a better description from the quote under it, which talks about being an open source network for web hosting across the decentralized blockchain. Now, what does that mean? And what is web hosting in general? Well, I think that a lot of people don't really understand how the internet works, even though we use it on a daily basis. We don't understand what's happening behind the scenes. Though I'm not going to go into extensive detail, and if you'd like to get that extensive detail, Feel free to watch this video by Bluehost, which is a web hoster, and I'm going to kind of rail on later on. However, they do a great job here of demonstrating how web hosting works and what really goes on when you go and visit any website. But I'm going to talk more on a philosophical sense before we dive into what Substratum is trying to do. In the world of web hosting, uh, we, we realize once we look at it in a very uh, philosophical and technical sense that it's very centralized. Okay, Whereas we think the, the web is this beautiful place that's very decentralized, it's really not. Um, any website that we go to, whether it be maybe your personal website or a small business's website or any kind of maybe social media that you might use or entertainment, a lot of it, all, pretty much all of it has to come from a web host. It's a fact. It needs a web host to host the server that is going to uh, transfer information between your personal computer and that server that holds all the information and the files that you're going to need to bring the web page up that you want to see. So what are some of those examples and what are some of the companies that host web servers. Um, well, I can give you a few right off the bat. We just looked at one. Bluehost is a perfect example. We have GoDaddy. We have Amazon Web Services, etc. There's dozens out there. However, those dozens are becoming a lot more powerful and a lot more uh, conglomerized, meaning they're becoming mo much more monopolistic in the long term of web hosting, and it's becoming very centralized and enclosed. And there's a lot of fears tied to that, folks. Now, it's not the reason that these companies are getting uh, more enclosed that it's really a fear. It's not like the companies are going to try to censor us out of anything. However, costs will continue to go up as it becomes more centralized. But the biggest fear of all and why there's so much power behind the decentralization of web hosting is because of countries like China. We see that countries like China, not just in China, across the globe we're seeing this, governments continue uh, are continuing, continuing to encroach on our freedom on the web. And they're starting to censor out what we can and can't do or can and can't see. That being said, China is a perfect example in the sense of having to use, uh, you have to use so many different uh, barrier breakers to get onto the web the way you'd like. For example, you have to use the Tor browser, a specific web client that rarely anybody knows about unless they have to get onto the web that way. And then also, they have to use VPNs. They've got to use a virtual private network to actually access the websites that they want on the Tor browser. So there's all these kind of like, you know, 
huge leaps that people have to take technologically to get onto the web in certain areas of the world. That being said, we can see that the kind of centralized web hosting world is uh, it's not working out and it's limiting us a lot, limiting us and a lot of people in general who we might not know are being limited um, from accessing the web they'd like to see. So now that I've rambled on about that, now that you get the concept of why the centralized web is bad, now a decentralized web might not sound so bad. And I'm telling you all, it's much more achievable through Substratum's technology than you might think. So Substratum is trying to bring decentralization to web hosting, and they're doing it on the blockchain. So this is a really cool concept. Let's go ahead and look at some of their technology. And the most primary one I want to talk about today is its core technology, and that's the Substratum node. So what is its node and what is it allowing us to do? Well, as you might think with, for example, when we've talked about Sia coin with storing cloud storage on our own personal PCs or with Mysterium serving as a decentralized VPN, Substratum takes that same concept of web hosting and brings it to your computer. If you go watch how websites work, the video that I linked in the description or that came from Bluehost, uh, you'll hear in the video that, um, that all the servers and those you've probably seen the pictures before in your mind instantly where there's just thousands of rows of big servers that are hosting uh, websites your computer though it may look completely different is no different really it has all the functioning components to host a website it just needs the technical application of it which is what substratum is aiming to achieve so you can go out and actually host websites and this is the coolest thing guys i think i've seen in a long time in the ico market they already have concept pictures of how the technology would work and how it would look and how you can uh, measure and host different websites and they also have ways to measure how uh, they can make it efficient by using artificial intelligence and business intelligence rules they can make it so we can bounce and host webs uh, websites uh, off of our own personal computers and gain uh, so, um, substratum or sub coins uh, for our own selves uh, to build cash flow and this is really powerful guys I think this is really cool and if they can deliver on this on the tech side this is this is a revolution and um, web hosting in general. And I think it's going to give uh, the centralized web hosters a run for their money and really give an opportunity for people in China who don't wanna learn about VPNs, who don't wanna learn about using Tor to actually go about using this decentralized network of web hosting. That's the coolest thing about it, guys. If you go and read through the white paper like I have, I've read completely through it at least two to three times because I was so interested in it and I picked it up very quickly. Within the white paper, they state you don't need a Tor browser. You don't even need a VPN. Use the Substratum network. The reason you don't need that is because it's decentralized from the get-go. The web hosting is on this decentralized network that no government can censor, and it can't go to whatever IP that uh, website is being hosted at. It can't just go to Amazon's uh, headquarters and say, no, stop hosting that website. It's on this decentralized network, and the network is constantly changing where that website's going to be hosted from to meet the best user experience. It's absolutely phenomenal. It is an absolute game changer in my mind, if it can deliver. So what's cool is like I was saying too, you can uh, really, as it says, make money while you sleep. You can build residual income through subcoins uh, by hosting people's websites while you go to sleep. Uh, now it does a little bit during the day uh, on the standard default settings. However, when it kicks off, you can set the schedule. When you have, on, have your off hours, when you're going to bed and stuff, start racking in that income. You can start activating it on your computer at late night hours and really seeing the benefit of generating sub tokens and hosting websites for people. So. Folks, I'm ambitious on this. I think it's great. Now, that being said, even with the technology, there's a few other parts to it. For example, the next thing they have in their phase is CryptoPay. Uh, this is a platform that you'll be able to use to exchange cryptocurrency um, and payment systems on the Substratum network later on in the future. And this is a little bit later in the pipeline as we go down through their website. They've got a timeline, and we're gonna look at the team in just a sec, but they've got a good timeline here. They've got the uh, ICO token sale starting here in October. They're going to be on the exchange of Bitrix and Bitfinex in September. Good news. A lot of coins struggle to get on those exchanges right away. However, they've got a promising concept, and I can see why they're on there uh, in September. And we have the first actual tech drop in later, uh, late 2017 for the version 1 of the Substratum Network, and then version 2 will be launched in early 2018. So they've got some pretty soon de uh, deadlines to actually deliver this tech and it seems like through the visual images that we've seen in the concept photos they're ready to deploy this they're just continuing to work on it and make it work as efficient as possible so that being said 
that's all great. But is the team there? That's the question, guys. And I've been looking through the team a little bit and getting a, a little bit of knowledge from the team. And I gotta say, the two people I really looked at were the uh, the first two people, the solutions architect and the lead software developer. As you all know, I try to get deep, uh, deep and dive into the actual individuals of these teams. And I gotta say, I'm very impressed with what I've seen. For example, Justin Tab, who is the solutions architect, was a previous entrepreneur himself. Uh, he was a managing partner at Override Pro. And if you go through, you can see that they've done work with companies like Apple, Disney, Kodak, Hewlett & Packard, etc. He's a very skilled individual, I think, in my opinion, to be working on a project like this and be bringing decentralization to the web. We can also see Abram uh, uh, Cookson, or sorry if I mispronounced your name, but uh, he's got a, a very nice record behind him working as a dev manager at Cardinal Health. Cardinal Health. Now, if you don't know Cardinal Health, I knew the name instantly when I saw it on LinkedIn because it is a multi-billion dollar healthcare solutions company. Very, very big to be working as a dev manager there. Uh, and he seems to be currently working there as well. So that's really awesome on Abram's part. So they've got a great team here. You can look more in depth into it. They've got everybody laid out on the team. Uh, and I think they've got a decent team to really deliver on this project. So that being said, I hope they continue to expand their team. I hope they continue to get bigger and build and make sure that they've got enough software developers to really deliver on this and make it a user-friendly experience. That all being said, guys, I'm very, very optimistic on this. So there's two things I want to say right off the bat with this. First off, if you are interested in Substratum, as with every ICO and every coin that you should invest in, Read the white paper. The white paper is phenomenal. I read through this at least two to three times. I'm very optimistic about it. And I think that the technology that is there to really bring about this, this concept of the decentralized web. That also being said, guys, uh, I, I was actually personally reached out to by the Substratum team. I've, I gotta be fair in that sense. They reached out to me uh, and I was happy they did because I've been very optimistic on this coin since people have started sharing it on my channel. They reached out to me and I asked them if we could do a personal one-on-one -on -one interview. So that being said, before you guys maybe might not feel confident in investing in this coiner token and you really wanna get some questions answered, I want those questions to be answered. So. I made sure to talk with one of their marketers and I talked uh, about meeting with Justin Tab and we're gonna be doing a actual Skype call that I'm gonna record and post on the channel answering your guys' biggest questions on this ambitious project. If you guys are skeptical about something, leave a comment below. If you guys are curious about deadlines, if they're going to be meeting the deadlines that they have on their website, if you guys feel like there might be an error in Substratum that you wanna call out, Leave it down in the comments below. They want critical feedback. They told me personally they want this to be as honest as possible and they want to have a true discussion to get you guys interested in this. So that being said, leave your comments down below, guys, and the interview will be up sometime in the next week or so during uh, probably the next phase of the ICO. That being said, outside of that, I'd love to hear what you all think about this. Do you think Substratum can really achieve what it's aiming to do? Do you think it's the lead in the, the race to decentralize the web? And do you think it's gonna be a game changer or do you think it's gonna be a flunk? I'd love to hear what you think, everyone. So if you could, leave comments down below. But until then, I will see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.